Can't go in there. <laughs> All right, everyone, welcome to the Cursed Forest. So back when I started YouTube, this was one of the games that I really, really wanted to play. I just didn't have a powerful enough computer to run it because every time I opened the game, my PC would either lock up or immediately blue screen. I honestly tried everything to get this working, but I ended up just giving up and kind of putting it on a shelf for a while. Until... I was going through a games list that I made a while back and I saw that this was on it and I had the biggest smile on my face because I'd honestly forgotten about it. Now, I don't know if this has aged well in terms of graphics or even storyline, but I wanted to share this with you guys because it has a little bit of a story behind it. And I remember people telling me that this was very good for its time. So this is what it says. When your character received the message that his mother was in hospital, he rushed to a raid, taking a shortcut by driving down an old forgotten road through an ominous autumnal forest. When something appeared in front of his car and caused him to crash, he was lost among the trees. The dark forest is hiding many secrets and creatures that wish to harm whatever crosses their path. Now it's up to him to uncover the mysteries of the past and save an innocent soul. But will he be able to survive long enough to do it? Here we go. Is he getting the phone call about his mom? I really do like this style. I think it works really, really well as a storytelling method, when it's done right, at least. Trying to shave off a little bit of time, looking for a shortcut through that thing. I mean, when you get a call like that, you would. Right, you take that risk for a loved one. No matter how bad it looks. If you know it can shave off a little bit of your journey to get to them sooner, then you definitely would. A teddy bear? <laughs> I couldn't even imagine what that fear would be like, let alone seeing some kind of apparition or entity at the side of the road, but then you just see it like staring you dead in the face from your rear view. <laughs> And there it is. The Cursed Forest. Oh no. Oh, we're in. Based off the way things look, then I th thought we were waiting for like some kind of intro sequence or cinematic or something. Our leg was pretty busted up there too. <gasps> was that, was that made that noise or was that something behind us? What is this place too? Look at that. These weird old looking stones. Okay, so as I've said, we're literally stepping into the unknown here. I know nothing about this. What I should say, though, is that this actually isn't the same as the original version. 
like the 2012-13 version, I want to say. I know it had some new life breathed into it when the original developer teamed up with someone else or some other people to basically create what we're looking at now, which is the 2019 version of the game, which I'm told has a little bit more to the storyline. So at least we get to see a little bit more about what's going on if we make it that far. Somebody's jacket there. I mean, there's a fire going. Is there people around? Sometimes I get so jealous that people have forests and things basically in their back garden. I'd love to go exploring. Okay, buried alive. I was scared to stay out in the open. I have a feeling that someone is watching me right from the trees. Oh, of course. The way through the cliffs seems like a good idea. It should allow me to get out here faster and stay unnoticed. When I tried to traverse the cliff, one of the stones fell on my leg. It's like this place itself won't let me leave. My leg isn't damaged, but the stone has pinned my leg pretty badly. I have to free my leg before something else falls. Okay, so is this a note from someone else that was here? And how old is that note? Not seen like a body or anything. I'm guessing it's that way where he said, through the cliff. See, here's another thing as well. I don't actually know if you can just go off trail and just have a look around this forest. It's probably a bad idea, but <laughs> let's do it. Can't go that way. Okay. I don't want to break anything. Look at this, though. With a little bit... Ooh. I mean, that's what you think of, right? When you think of cursed forest. Look at that down there. That, like, rickety bridge. With a little bit of survival training, I genuinely would love to do this. Just come out into the forest and spend hours out here exploring and... I don't know. What is that? I was a coward. Is that the entity of a... A deceased person? Alright. <laughs> Let's get back on the trail. I'm already in way over my head. Seeing some kind of apparition up there with an arm sticking out the floor. That's never good, the first 30 seconds of being in a cursed forest. It's got like a magical glow going on. So our objective is to just get out of here, right? Okay, Alter's Mystery. Ever since I started researching and writing about abandoned places, there's always been one in particular that I've always wanted to visit. I heard many stories about the place, everything from cars mysteriously breaking down as they tried to pass through to travelers venturing into the forest never to be seen again. Then there's the tales about the settlement itself. The people that lived there were building a railroad until one day they all disappeared without a trace. The incident has almost been forgotten now, discarded as an urban legend. A ghost story to keep children from straying too far into the woods. Now I have the opportunity to finally visit the area and who knows, Maybe I'll even solve the mystery of what happened there. When I first entered the settlement, I couldn't believe how many things had been left behind. Whole homes abandoned with all the family's belongings still inside. I find it hard to believe that the people would have left all their worldly possessions of their own free will. I feel as if every step I take leads me closer to discovering the truth. Still, no matter how exciting I find my discoveries, I feel uneasy in this place. As if I'm being watched. On the outskirts of the settlement's territory, I've made an incredible find. A set of altars. They look older than anything in the village, as though they were here long before the settlers were. Out of curiosity, I lit one of them. And as I did, the ground began to shake. Almost as though there had been a small earthquake. I'm sure it was nothing more than a coincidence, but still, standing in the light of the altar, I felt relief. As if I was safe from the terrible presence that had been following me. I think the altars could be an important clue as to what happened here all those years ago. I'll have to do more research tomorrow. Okay, so we're kind of building up a story of, oh, and it's night time. No. The first thing that came to mind then, okay, this is one of the altars then. There we go. So we got one of the altars lit. And that's a place that we can save too. Yeah, when we were going through that story then, the first thing that popped into my mind was Roanoke. 
kind of how everybody disappeared from that area. I still don't know the whole story behind that, like what actually happened or what the theories are. Are we supposed to go down there? Ooh. That's going to give way. Oh, oh my. I don't know if we were supposed to fall then, but <laughs> I just sprinted across it. <laughs> What's this? Nothing. Keep your eyes peeled, guys. These people are saying that they felt as if something was watching from the trees. I know for a fact I'm not going to see it first. You know, you know, like I always talk about really wanting a flashlight. <laughs> now you know why, especially in a place like this. A really strong, really, really bright flashlight. Preferably something that's got a bit of weight to it too, you know? So you can beat the bejesus over the head of something if... What animal makes that noise? That's not frogs, right? I know frogs can make some weird noises in swamps and stuff. Oh, look at that. Tell me that's not where a witch lives. We're getting eaten. Look at that with the moon behind it too. I want to pick this up. Oh, look at this. Map. Okay, so we're there. Okay, so we've got a Wendigo down in the bottom right. We've got a Killer Rabbit in the bottom left. Some kind of Super Mega Piranha in the top left. And we can't go the way we came because that's not the way home. Great. Oh, there's... Look at that. There's something in there too. Look at that. Okay, right. We're going to start this way. We'll go from left to right. Just going to face our fears. <sighs> Let me jump. What is that chattering sound? Hello? Anybody home? <laughs> I don't want an answer. Oh. Making you feel like it was going to lock you in then. I mean, take the knife. Inventory. Okay, what's this? Make darkness weaker and give feelings that you saved. Okay, wait. Okay, there we go. We got the carrot down here. Delicacy, but not for you. For, not for us. Oh, wait, the rabbit maybe. The killer rabbit. I just heard children playing outside. Okay, suspicions. There was a strange atmosphere in the settlement today. The people seemed more subdued and silent than usual, although it could have been a projection of my own foreboding. Sarah's predicament plays on my mind so much that out of the corner of my eye, I could swear I saw her sitting in my room. But when I looked, of course, she was not there. I'll need to approach her father about his attitude towards her. He is a harsh leader and no different in his parenting. While the villagers seem enraptured by his vision, I am less convinced and find it hard to trust his words as certainly as others. Although the streets were quiet today, in the night they seemed to have come alive. When I left my house to inquire as to the commotion, the noise faded into nothingness, as though it never existed in the first place. Tomorrow I will have to be braver and speak to Sarah's father. Then perhaps the feeling of unease will leave me, and the inexplicable things that have been happening here will show themselves to be nothing but a fracture of my own nervous mind. That was, that's written in such a chilling way. <laughs> like this person is manifesting their own fears that nobody else can see. <gasps> what? Oh, what did I miss? Is it just stuff moving? There's got to be like, oh, there we go, an axe. I was going to say, there's got to be an axe for like chopping wood or something. I know I've said it before. I'm going to keep saying it though. One day it is going to happen where I put my face to something like a window and there's going to be a face that just appears there. Even though I've been in the room or I've been in the building or whatever, I, I know it's going to happen. 
And that thing is going to come alive as well when we go over there. I don't think we can get up that way. Okay. Just getting familiar with where everything is. So behind the cabin is the... The Wendigo looking thing, right? Or Moose. Did I just see something there? Extreme paranoia now. Oh, yeah. Everything is setting me off. Nothing that we can grab. Pay attention to which way this thing's facing to. Oh, he's got like a little flat cap. Look at him. I mean, this looks so good. All right, we're on the trail of... Oh, yeah. An elk, maybe? Oh! I don't know if elks make that noise, but if they do, imagine hearing that while you're out in the wilderness. It does go to show, though, right? Like, whenever anybody talks about seeing things in the forest or hearing these weird things, animals can be just as scary as what you think is a cryptid. Or anything, I guess, for that matter, but... It just... It always blows my mind when... When you hear things like that, or the noises certain insects can make. Is that a cave up there? Ooh. Go and check that way first. There's no rhyme or reason to where I'm going, guys. I'm just having a look around. In case we find something. Like a flashlight. Hello? That was like stones. Listen to that slow drip sound. Deer. Yeah. While I was out walking in the forest, I came across a magnificent deer. His antlers were so big that his head bowed. I took them for fallen tree limbs. If only I'd brought my gun, it would have made an excellent trophy, but tomorrow I'll return to the same place in search of him. Yeah, you should probably stay away from that deer. We thought the antlers were fallen tree limbs. So it's some kind of like mythical beast or something. Okay, so this is back at the cabin. So we we can cut through here if we need to, if we're in a bit of a rush. Good to know. Ooh, what's this? What? Nine and three quarters. Is that some kind of Harry Potter reference? I'm pretty sure. It's been a while since I've seen it, but... I mean, I'm not a biggest fan as you probably think I am. <laughs> but platform nine and three quarters and the, the owl, is that some kind of reference? I don't know. Maybe it's an Easter egg or something. Somebody let me know in the comments. If we need that, then I know where it is at least. Can you imagine if there is somebody called Harry in this now? It's going to destroy all of the immersion for me. <laughs> I'm just going to say it right now. There's no way there's going to be someone called Harry in this. Right, down here to the left... And hopefully we see this deer that he's just mentioned. I guess we should keep a lookout then for anything that looks like fallen tree limbs. Oh, we just... Oh, I see it. Look at that. It's just right at the end of this path. And its eyes are glowing. He's gone. Let's keep going this way. You went down there. I was relaxed a second ago. I'm definitely not anymore. Same thing, nine and three quarters. This way? Oh, nothing chased me while I'm climbing through this. 
Oh, is this just another altar that we can use? Okay, perfect. Right. Have a look around first. <laughs> Ooh. What's this? No idea. All right, let's light the altar. Here we go. Okay. Remember that symbol there? Question mark with, like, the line through it. Is that, like, somebody curtsying? So many questions. Let's keep it moving. Oh, my fu- <gasps> There was no sound, nothing. Just some kind of shadow. <gasps> yep, yep. Oh! <sighs> that wasn't me moving then either. That was. <sighs> All right, let's just keep going. Than throwing rocks. I mean, we're going to go this way. We have to. This is the way we saw that thing go. And we're definitely going to fall into, like, a cave? No? Okay. Nothing here. It's like a campfire or something up there. I don't know what that was that was in front of that cave then. And I don't know if I'm supposed to be putting anything together here from anything we've read, but I'm definitely not doing that right now. I'm too scared. Okay, there's another altar there. Okay, can we just like take a second? Crouch and breathe? Oh. <gasps> okay. There we go. We slowed the heart rate down. Let's continue on. Smuggler Cave Secrets. Jan told me that there is a cave hidden in the forest where many years ago thieves from the city hid precious contraband. When they were caught, the cave was searched and the valuable items were confiscated and removed. As I knew of few interesting stories about this area, I pestered Jan for every detail he knew. We searched the cave for weeks with only a vague idea as to its location. Eventually on one of our many rambles in the forest, I found it, exactly as it had been described. The boulders flanking either side of the entrance, the hanging ivy partially obscuring the hole in the rock face, the fallen log perched precariously above it. I wanted to go inside, but the daylight only penetrated a few feet into its depths. I'd had the illogical thought that maybe something precious had been left behind in there. Jewels that had fallen into a crack in the floor and gone unnoticed. Money that had been hidden extra securely amongst the stalagmites that had not been found. Gold pieces buried under a thin layer of dirt in the floor. Jan convinced me not to go in. The ground was slippery and uneven, and without a light to guide our way, we could get lost in a branching tunnel. I never returned to explore. I think that's for the best. If I'd have entered the cave, it would have been empty and only filled with my disappointment. Since I never went back, in my mind it remains an untouched cavern filled with riches. A room of lost glittering treasure. A precious memory. Yeah, but what if you went in there and it was stacked from floor to ceiling of jewels and gold? <laughs> <laughs> now is not the time to stay relaxed be on edge you're in a cursed forest be on the lookout for everything is that the cave down there <sighs> do we do it oh Why do I feel like if I start walking across that, there's going to be rocks that just slam down and take me out? Come on. I don't know if this is trying to teach me a lesson here. Like, there's things that are just not worth your life. Oh! Ooh, okay. We use one of our nine lives there. I didn't really see a, a way that loop round back to the forest unless, unless this is above where we saw that bridge earlier. Yeah, this is the altar. Okay, so this is above it. Yeah, I saw this light coming from up here. So I think we're supposed to be going this way. 
What I meant by that back there, by the way, is I don't know if the forest is trying to teach us a lesson as in like dangling that tainted fruit, which in this case would have been that cave with the potential treasure in there. And then it's saying, is it worth your life? Because if it is, <laughs> I'll take it. Let's just keep going though, see how far we can get. Look at that. <laughs> would you walk across that? Don't break, don't break, don't break, please. <laughs> nice. Nice and light-footed. Oh, we're actually still making our way round. We get across. Oh, we can jump too. Yo! Okay, we can go back that way as well. Is that an arm? Okay, so there's pieces of a skeleton that we need to find. Easy does it. Stay crouched. There we go. And get back across. How far down is that? Oh, yeah, okay. That's basically into the center of the earth. Or probably a different dimension. With more terrifying things. There it is again. Oh. What are you? Okay, let's keep things moving. So if we go back to where we... Okay, now I'm starting to think that thing doesn't look human. It didn't really have a neck. It was kind of hunched over at the back. I mean, we are getting like really brief glances at this thing, but... I thought it was maybe the spirit of someone trying to lead me to safety. Oh! that the way we went before? Yeah, okay. I kind of want to go back this way, though. I know that was the shortcut, but I want to go back this way. Please stop that. The slight sounds of, like, the laughing afterwards, like, when the rocks are being thrown. Do anything with these. No. Okay, let's get away from this deer. Demon deer. So, this way is going to be the rabbit now, right? Yeah, the cabin. Deer was that way. Let's go down here. I'm completely on edge right now, so anything that comes. <laughs> Anything that comes along is probably going to make me jump. Stupid bird. What is that? Because there is no sound. And then you just hear like a bird or another type of animal. I don't like this. Fluffy friend. Okay, here we go. My father never liked my frequent trips into the forest. As a deterrent, he used to tell me tales of feral wolves that roam through the trees. Oh no, I was going to say that looks like a wolf den. Hunting in packs and ripping apart any animal or human they encountered. To this day, I believe that the wolves were nothing more than stories told by an overbearing parent because I never saw, heard or sensed their presence. I think that's because the forest has always been a beautiful and peaceful place to me. Exactly the way I imagined it from my books, not the dangerous place I was told existed beyond the tree line. Every step I take deeper into the forest highlights its beauty. The sweet smelling flowers, the harmony of singing birds, the squirrels that jump skittishly from one tree to another, and even the insects that find their haven amongst the varied plants. See, you make that sound so nice, but it's not. It's not the case. <laughs> One particularly sunny day, I was walking in the forest when I heard a noise from the bushes. It was not the rustling of wind on leaves, but of something lurking in the undergrowth. My mind, though normally calm amongst the trees, immediately jumped to thoughts of wolves waiting to pounce. I took a cautious step back, and as though it had suddenly seen its chance to escape, 
a rabbit jumped from the underbush and bolted for its hole. The next day, I returned with a carrot for the rabbit and placed it in front of its home. Within 30 minutes, it reappeared, sniffing the food cautiously and allowing me to get a better look at it. Its coat was a shining silvery grey and around its right eye was a perfectly circular patch of black fur. Within two weeks, it was eating out of my hand. The rabbit's bravery was short-lived. Its comfort in the presence of humans made it an easy target for the settlement hunter. Sometimes I think animals deserve more sympathy than humans. Okay, so... So you're telling me now that I have to get... The carrot... <laughs> this is gonna be a killer rabbit, isn't it? Do I want to move away from this? Zoom in. Oh wait, it took it. There he is. Oh, did you leave me something? Oh, you gave me another piece of the skeleton. Oh, don't do it. Oh god, I'm taking a breath. Two six. Gave you a little bit of food. I don't mean any harm. Some kind of cursed forest creature. That's not a rabbit in there. You already know it's gonna have like deformed limbs and stuff, and it's gonna be terrifying. Alright, another altar. My shadow friend gonna make an appearance again. You do get that feeling in this. More than most that you are being watched. Oh, no. I'm just going to hold on for a couple of seconds. And I'm going to ask you guys. Have you noticed it? I'll give you a couple of seconds. Because I want you to be as terrified as I am. It's gone. <laughs> I knew we should have kept an eye on that thing. I thought at one point it would be facing a different direction, just like a subtle change, but it straight up lifted itself off of that. I think I just heard something in there. Can I take it now? I would definitely pull that out of the tree. His face has changed as well. Wait. Have you got a knife in your hand? I don't want to go out like this. <laughs> I don't want to go out to like a scarecrow or whatever you are. Subtle head movement. That was so good. Okay. All right. Is this your place? I'll leave you alone. Pissed that I've been in his house. Please don't follow me off this way. All right. Let's go over to that map. The subtle things that are done in this, I really, really like. Because it's not always like the big fancy jump scares in your face that are absolutely terrifying. It's sometimes the subtle things that you don't barely notice. <laughs> and then your brain just plays tricks. Okay, so we're going this way now. What's all this business on either side of it, though? What's this? Not seeing anything that I recognize with, like, the symbols or anything. So we've been here. We've been here. Yeah, let's go this way. You still there? Whew. Let's keep it going. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, guys. This is really, really cool, and I'm so glad to be in this and experiencing it after so long. But it doesn't make it easier. <laughs> it definitely doesn't. Oh, I can hear something throwing stones again. Oh, no, 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 no. I can't do bugs. Please, no, no. Some kind of massive killer fish is one thing, but bugs... 
Like, the, the amount of mosquitoes that must be in swamps like this. Okay, monster in the lake. When I was younger, an older boy told me a story about a creature that lived in the lake. He swore that while out walking, he had looked towards the distant shoreline and saw a red glow softly radiating from within the water. The boy took off his shoes and cautiously waded inward to get a better view, but as he got closer, it rapidly started toward him, I guess started moving toward him. Startled, he backed out of the water to the safety of land. Emerging from the spot he had just occupied, the boy glimpsed bright red scales, a shark-like jaw and rows of ragged sharp teeth. After having recounted his tale, I told the boy that I didn't believe him, that nothing so monstrous could be in creation. In response, he retrieved from his bag an old book, flipping to a well-thumbed page and showed that hand-drawn picture of a grotesque-looking catfish. It was not the creature he had seen, but proof that nature could be more hideous than anything I'd ever imagined before. I went home in tears, and my father berated me for believing in such foolish make-believe stories. Even now, although I know it cannot be true, some part of me believes that such a creature exists, perhaps hiding in a cave deep below the water's surface. Sometimes it haunts my dreams. In them, I'm a boy swimming out into the lake. I see it beneath me, coming towards me, but I'm powerless to move when it grabs my leg in its jaw and drags me into the depths. I feel no pain, only the sense of relief that comes from succumbing to the inevitable. That is horrible. <laughs> that is so horrible. And I'm sure most of you guys watching this, me included, have had a dream like that where we're drowning and something's pulling us under like that. It's strange. You'd think that I would stay away from the lake, but more than ever, I find myself drawn there, hoping to catch a glimpse of the mysterious creature from my nightmares. Yeah, you've got that kind of focused obsession now because you're dreaming about it and you can't shift it. Oh, that frog scared the shit out of me then. Oh, that big old boy. <laughs> and he just belly flopped into the into the water. Right, we're not going to the end of that yet. I'm going to walk around here. Why do I feel like this was a bad idea? Am I supposed to be walking out? Oh, no, no, no. I'm not taking my shoes off. I'm not dipping my toes into that lake. <laughs> There's no way. Okay, let's jump back onto this. And we'll see. Okay, that's another part of the skeleton then. Not seeing any glowing scales. No shark-like features or anything. All right, we got to go that way. Shit. If anyone's scared of, like, deep water or anything, I've got a feeling we're going to get pulled under into, like, a cave or something by this giant monster. Slowly does it. Oh, no bubbles, please. Onto this. Still not seeing anything. That's a pelvis. When I pick that up, something is going to come swimming towards this. I'm probably going to have to get away with a quickness. Where are we going then? Okay, I guess it's back that way and then round to there. <gasps> oh, that was so... So subtle. What is that? Oh, is it just bubbles? I thought it was dead fish, like, on their side. Go. Go. Don't look back. There's definitely something in there. So it does exist, at least in this place. I'm a little bit paranoid now that there's something on land as well as in the sea because we've seen those shadow figures and stuff. But through this. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I did not like that. <laughs> it just sunk down. Oh, yeah, no, I'm in, like, knee-deep water there. Get up. Over there. Please. Oh, yes. I feel like if I stay here, I'm going to see something. I'm a 
little bit tempted to walk in there and I don't know why. Maybe it's intrusive thoughts, but <laughs> I feel like this is like a drop-off. Do we do it? I'm going to stomach it for like three seconds. If it's bad, I'm getting out. Oh, no! Oh, God, no, I hate that. We can actually swim under the water too? Okay, hold on. <gasps> no, that is all bad. No, it's pitch black under there. I'm not doing that. There's no way. No. I do not care. That is terrifying. There is something in there which shouldn't be there as well. <laughs> not just to mention the terrifying, like, dark depths of that place. Right, let's use the altar again. Go to the house. Is that that scarecrow? <laughs> so far, the birds. No, the deer definitely gave me a bit of a scare before, but the birds have been the worst thing. Oh! I walked up to that before as well. I put my face right against it. Right, get in the house. Whoa, 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 what's happening? Oh, we're blacking out. Wait, what's going on? What? Oh. <laughs> What's just put us here? Did we... Did we get chucked down into some cave or something? Hello? What is that? They're worshipping something. What are we looking at here, guys? What is this? I'm getting a different vibe from this now. It's no longer like a mythical cursed forest. It's more like alien, you know? Is that a leg? trying to take all this in right now and I really don't know what we're looking at. Like, what is this stuff? What do all these things that are painted on the side of the rocks, what do they mean? What are they worshipping? Look, that's some kind of portal or something? There was a figure that they were worshipping before that looked a lot taller than the things worship. Oh, shit. We're gonna get chased by something. Does something need a body to possess it? I'm stuck. I'm stuck dead in place. <gasps> what is this? Oh, shit! What are we looking at there? What is that? <laughs> oh, no. No, no! Ah, go! Oh, that's so horrible! I hate being chased by shit like this! Go! <gasps> okay, yeah, you don't want to fall off there. So we've got to worry about this darkness now, this thing. Look at that. That That's moving on its own. That wasn't just a random thing. Have we freed that entity that made us crash at the beginning? I have so, so many questions to ask. And I know I'm not going to get an answer to them because I'm so stressed. <laughs> I know I'm going to have to sprint for my life. In the next 10 seconds or something, so 
I'm just trying to carve out a path up there, round through that, but... I don't know, it looks like we can go this way too. Right, let's go up first. Shut up, birds. Need to listen. It was you! You were the shadow figure then! That's why I was seeing! And I'm not jumping in there, no, if that's what you were telling me to do. I'm not... I'm not doing it. There's like multiple paths as well. Oh, you straight off like... Springboarded off this thing. I knew that was gonna... I was just about to see that's gonna break. If I stand on the edge of that, that's gonna break. I kind of want to do it, though. Oh, shit. Okay, right. No, let's double check back this way. If nothing's there, <laughs> I'm cannonballing off that. Okay, right. Just trying to make sure we're checking everywhere. There's probably been a couple of places that I haven't explored, but for the most part, I think we've seen most areas. Yeah, down here, right? So this was the, the altar, then? That we found before with the uh, the deer. Yeah, okay. So this place, yeah, this wasn't open. This was all rocked off. And then when we crawled through that, that's where we saw the, uh, the shadow figure. Moment of truth. Is this going to be a good choice? <laughs> or are we just sacrificing ourselves so we can bring something really evil into the world? Here we go. <gasps> oh! Go, oh, go. Cool. Keep going! Oh! I was so tense then. <laughs> I really thought we would hear something chasing us. It's okay, get your breath back. What's going on with our vision? Oh no! There we go, okay. I think we just needed to clean our eyes a little bit. Right, what's this? Okay, so there's something down that way. And there's another way down here, too. I don't know what that's telling us. Is that some kind of altar again? Here we go. I don't even know how to make sense of this. There's another cabin up to the north area and then through the mountains. Maybe that's what one of the notes was saying earlier, like this area. I mean, we have to go here. I have to know what that is. So we'll check this way first. And then we'll come back through here, I guess. By the way, every single time I'm in that map, I feel like there's going to be something, like, peeking from behind something, or behind this, like the shadow figure, and just run away. Let's try this way first. What was that showing? Is that somebody drowning? It's that weird chattering sound again. Imagine if you found yourself in a forest like this, and I... I don't doubt that there's absolutely... I'm hearing something. I feel like I'm about to be run up on. Hold on, let me just wait here for a second before I go any further. I was just going to say, I feel like there are forests like this. Obviously, we're not like the fancy glows and stuff, but... I know in places of the States and other parts of Europe and stuff and like really remote areas of the world, I couldn't even imagine how scary it is to just wander through wild parts that have just never been seen by humans before. The noises you must hear, the, the way the animal... Yep. Here it is. We're getting ready to run. I really don't want to go over to you, but I think I have to. Okay, that's a witch. What is that sound? And why am I going... This way. What? What in the fresh hell just happened? <gasps> I 
we upside down? Nothing be holding my leg. Please, nothing be holding my leg. Oh, I see another body part over there. No, no. Oh, I think it was us standing up. I could have swore that I heard something moving in, though, like it was just stood right behind us then. Okay. Sexy leg, four out of six. We got Scarecrow. Okay, here we go. Wow. Okay, I need to calm down for a second. I'm, I'm so expecting a jump scare, so... I have lived here all my life, playing in the fields under the watchful eye of the scarecrows. My neighbor, an old man whose name I do not recall, used to spend a lot of time in his garden. He was a settler with a violent skin condition that meant most of his life was spent alone and away from the comfort of others. As he sowed his small plot of land, he spoke in hushed tones to his scarecrow, and I began to notice that the other villagers purposely looked away when he did this. One day, passing the old man conversing with the straw one, I grew suddenly bold. Do you believe the scarecrow will speak back? I asked. It's not wise to say such things, little girl. A scarecrow cannot talk. He smiled darkly. However, the same cannot be said for what is living inside it. It grows stronger every day. And it waits. It watches. Nothing can stop it. I suggest that you don't try to stand in its way. His face grew suddenly ashen and he spoke again to the scarecrow. No, I didn't. She's harmless. She won't tell anyone, will you? He grew more and more frantic, his hands reaching out to grab me, to beg me to keep a secret that I didn't understand. I ran. The next day, the old man was found dead. His garden quickly started to rot, as though the land had been poisoned. Soon after, I contracted a dreadful fever. As I lay awake tossing and turning, I looked out of my window and saw the scarecrow pressed up against the glass. I hid under the covers and eventually fell into a restless sleep. When I woke up, he was gone, but from that point on, I've always felt his eyes watching me from the fields. Ooh. You can leave me alone, Mr. Strawhead. How about that? I don't need any scarecrow friends. Let's get this altar. You're gonna move. I know it. Oh, there it is! I saw that! That slight flinch! I don't know if that was intentional, but I saw it. Is that a trap? Oh, there's something in the water. Nice. Stay on these little areas of land. Got it. Which way am I supposed to go here? This way? There we go. That chattering sound is really unnerving. I hate that. Let's try and avoid that water as much as we can. <laughs> okay, so we've got... Oh. I definitely saw something at the beginning then. Like, kind of just peeking. Yeah, this is the way we came in. Right, let's go this way then. That's where that figure is. I said to you guys, did I see something peeking? Yeah, it was that. I don't feel like this is a good thing, by the way. I definitely feel like we're being forced into doing something really bad to, like, bring... Th to bring this thing to life. Box there. Won't be peeking. Come on, get over that. We made it back? Okay, good. Is this where the... Yeah, this is where the map is. Okay, right. I know where we are now. So we can basically continue on our way now. We've been down there. We got the... Uh, the bones. Let's just save her. 
What are the chances? Oh, I almost didn't make that if I had to have done that. <laughs> Can we go into that? <coughs> oh, no, I don't like that. <gasps> no! Oh, shit, no! <gasps> okay, you want me to go the other way? I get it. Was it just resting here? We're going to see all of these creatures at one point. Oh, yep. So we got some kind of way up through there. Down there too. Is that bucket going to fall? <laughs> Another cabin? going to be cages in there. There's going to be a big pot or a cauldron cooking something. <laughs> you already know it. Where is the witch? I'm having a look around first. I'm not just going straight into that house. I mean, I could build a crossbow or a bow and arrow or something. Even like a pokey stick, you know? Something. Just to give us a fighting chance. Oh. Hello? I don't really want to... Stare at the windows in case the scarecrow appears there. Okay, I'm not picking that up yet. That's all locked. Is there a key anywhere in case I need to find it? <laughs> He's trying to get on top of things, you know? God, I can feel my heart right now. It's just spiked. What is this? Oh, I saw it as well. <laughs> There's like ladders leading up to a, uh, like an attic area. Okay, runestone. I can't believe my luck. I found the runestone. It's the very last element needed for the ritual and as a reward... Our glorious leader thanked me personally and made me its keeper. In his wisdom and kindness, he also gave me a small house near the lake, which is more pleasant than my previous home. Soon, we will wash this land of sin, while the weak-willed seek redemption in death and the promise of a different perfect world. We are fighting to make our earthly realm that haven. With our help, the people here will become perfect specimens of humanity unspoiled entities cleansed of depravity. The sea takes a shard of jagged glass and washes it smooth. So too shall we shape this world into one of our own creation, and I will be among those forging the way. Change is coming, and I shall be one of the leading architects of the future. There is no way I am going to let that happen. You talk about perfect specimens? I'm going to get rid of your fucking rune. I know there's going to be something in here with us. I'm either calling that attic or something appearing in the doorway. Grab the rune. Oh, I knew it! Yep, it's above. What's this? Can't pick them up. I'm just looking for anything that I can slap the shit out of... You're going to open. <gasps> What's happening? Oh, here we go. I see it. That darkness is spreading. Stay in the light. Oh, look at that. <gasps> Make out the face. Where is it? Go! Go! So the key was on that, like, cabinet thing. There's gotta be something that we can use as a weapon. There has to be. I 
Oh. I was a hypocrite. So are these the souls of the people who went missing in this area, like it was saying at the beginning? And it's this thing that's caught... That's caught... Oh, look at that. It's like seeping out the top of it. Completely infested with that darkness. Right, let's go... That way, I guess. Let's see what's up here. Just a campfire. Oh, here we go. About Yan. Our leader asked me not to touch him. He said that making him disappear would evoke unwanted attention, but all Yan has brought to our settlement so far is trouble. I remember when he first came to us. He used to make trips into the city, which wasn't normal to any of us. Our settlers don't need people like him, but out of kindness, we gave him a chance. I tried to invite him to my house for supper, cooked by my wife. I thought that by meeting him eye to eye, we would get to know him better. And with an acquaintance, he would become better accustomed to our lifestyle. He refused my invitation. Then, I invited him hunting. Even this, he criticized, telling stupid stories about his past and how he decided never to take a life of an animal for sport. My dislike for him grows by the day. I wasn't fooled for a moment by his innocent facade. Yan came to us pretending to be a saint, but everyone has their sins. Soon, he will learn that the past never truly stays in the past. When we are together, he attempts to turn the conversation towards our leader, trying to steal information out of me about his family. It unnerves me. He may be untouchable for the moment, but that will quickly change once we have completed the ritual. Then, the sinners will get what they deserve. I don't think so. I think Yan was onto something. You're all a bunch of weirdos. And I'm not letting this evil escape this place. Oh. Is that a pooper? Why is there always notes where people take shits? I mean, it makes sense. Now I say it out loud, it definitely makes sense. You've got a lot of time to, <laughs> to write a note while you're having a poop. <laughs> oh, my God! Oh. <gasps> Oh, I nearly fucking passed out. I had no air in my lungs when that made me jump. I was getting so ready just to read all of that. <sighs> okay, can we read the note then? So it's the same note. Holy shit, that was so bad. I'm sure you guys heard that, but I forced myself so far backwards as well because my legs kicked out. Okay, time. I tried hard, but I can't easily escape this place. That's why, for now, I've given up attempting to leave. Instead, I'll continue to research and solve mysteries of what happened here. The shadow of the past covers this land like a suffocating lead blanket woven of pain and suffering. Time here moves cryptically in circles the past and present merging to show unspeakable horrors. Hidden amongst the trees, you can hear the voices of the past calling to you. I think I'm connected or perhaps tethered to this place. It won't let me leave. I even can't tell how much time's passed. There is no way to distinguish one hour from another. This forest is sucking the life from me. I need to find a way out of here or this place is going to kill me. The madness around me has blended reality and nightmare into one hellish existence. I need to hold on to myself and write down any useful information so I don't miss a thing. I hope that what I find will help the next person trapped here and he will inform the world about my efforts. I don't want to die nameless. <sighs> I'm sorry, nameless person. I am so incredibly stressed after that. I'm still recovering from the jump as well. It's always the case, isn't it? I always say... Something stupid leading up to it. Why is there a note in the pooper? Because your soul is going to get snatched from you in the next three seconds. That's why, you idiot. <laughs> or nice and easy. No matter how hard that thing tries, though, we just got to keep going. I think that's the, uh, the pooper back there. 
I don't think we missed anything, right? It's worth just double checking while we got the time. All right. <laughs> I'm definitely not going in there again. So there's something over there which is glowing. Probably another note or something. Can't get up there. Okay, we cross. Everything so far has told me that the water is bad to be in, so don't hang around. What's that? Oh, is it just the just a ledge? <laughs> Nothing to see. Keep it going. The terrain is so funky here. Am I not supposed to be going this place? Just following the shoreline down instead? Oh, no. Oh, no. I've done it. There we go. I thought I broke it for a second. Can we not go this way? There we go. Not entirely sure this is the right way, but it's working for us, so let's keep going. <laughs> I was just about to say that thing is still in there. So we're not crossing here then. Got it. Go over to the shallow area. That's the way we came. Yeah, so it's got to be this way. Unless I am supposed to go up there, which it doesn't look like I am. I think it's this way. I'm going to stick to the rocks. Oh. Yep, good idea. Stay tight to the rocks. Oh. I'd be super dead if that landed on you. Can't climb it. Kind of pushing me into the center, so... Let's just stay here. Oh, I knew it. Go, go, go. Oh, I saw you then. It was the shadow figure. It went. Yep. See, at times I feel like it's leading me somewhere. Like it's not... Yeah, look. Like it's not trying to chase, but... That could be the same thing as me doing its bidding, right? Making it... <sighs> okay, the day's back. Making it look like it's not bad. Oh, the scarecrow's back. I'd really like to get a look at that deer, though. Look at this. Cool little spot. Cooking some sausages. Oh, please tell me I can have that. Oh, yes! Rabbit! Oh, I can only wiggle it. Oh, that's <laughs> such a tease. All right, big guy. You keep cooking your uh, sausages. Just going to go up here a second. There's another note there. Right, let's get this altar first. Did you move? Oh, you did! What is that next to you, though? Right, let's read this note. Tourist note. I spent all month cramped in my small room with a soldering iron working on my radio receiver. The last student project doesn't have to be submitted until April, so... I'm way ahead, which is why I agreed to go camping with some friends. We're all from the city, so taking a vacation outdoors should be an unforgettable trip. Hopefully for all the right reasons. Yuri says he's found an interesting place to set up camp, so everything is ready and I'd better start packing for my meeting with nature. 25th of October. It's the first day of the trip and we've already failed. We couldn't buy any booze in the shop. The seller said that we were too young. We had no choice but to awkwardly buy a bunch of lemonade. <laughs> Luckily, Semyon brought a huge flask with him. That should make the lemonade more interesting. 26th of October. We made camp and set up a campfire, but before that, we went to wet our feet in the river. After so many hours in a small car, it was great to be out in nature. This place has a lot of creepy urban legends, lots of them about people disappearing. Nikolai told us some scary stories about black houses filled with coffins. It might just be because of too much lemonade, but I'm starting to feel strangely uncomfortable in this place. Still, it's just my imagination. 
Nothing can happen to me yet. I still have exams to pass. <laughs> oh, I don't think they're going to keep you safe. 27th of October. Ludmilla, Rustim, and Zineda drank way too much. They covered a beautiful looking stone monument in empty lemonade bottles. I think the students from our archaeological club would die for the chance to see this thing. It looks like a really ancient altar. So that's what we just lit then. It was our altar where all the bottles scattered everywhere. The forest itself is incredibly dense. I almost broke my neck tripping over some roots. I swear the trees are doing it on purpose. In the evening, we found a weird ladder leading somewhere, but we're also exhausted that we decided to explore it later. 28th of October. I thought this trip would be the perfect time to tell Lord Miller about my feelings for her, but of course, Rustim hasn't let me get a moment alone with her. It's so typical of him. He seems to get any girl he wants, and the moment any of us show interest, he claims them for himself. I didn't want him in this trip with us. He always ruins everything. He's good friends with Yuri, though, so I couldn't tell anyone about how I feel. 29th of October. Georgie came back from his walk in the forest absolutely frantic and panicking. He said that he'd seen a ferocious-looking creature between the trees with glowing eyes. Rustin tried to laugh it off. He told Georgie that he must have drank too much. Rustin, being the huge show-off that he is, has gone into the forest to look for it. The girls tried to stop him, but he had his mind set on being a hero. I can't believe this is happening. It all happened so fast. Rustin came back. He was covered in blood. He was crawling towards us, screaming at us to run. Everybody ran as fast as they could from our camp, but it was so stupid. The nearest city is 100 kilometers from here. We all got separated and now I'm alone and lost in this awful place. I'm leaving these notes dotted around like breadcrumbs, hoping that our rescue group will find them. Please don't give up searching for us. I'm trying to stay hopeful, but I don't know if I can survive this nightmare. Why did we come here? I thought they said they couldn't get any alcohol. What's all this then? Is this just the lemonade? Is that what it is, Scarecrow? Or did you hook him up? <laughs> Look at him just leaning back. We definitely can't take this. Oh, I feel so much better having that. So this was their camp then. This is all that's left. And I'm guessing this is the only other way. So what, we're going to find like bones or another note as to how desperate things got? Just keep things moving then. Is that the drawing on the rock? It's a whip. Oh, Indiana Jones moment. Oh, stay tight. Stay crouched. <gasps> Wait, what? Why did that squish us then? Was that not a rock? Maybe I've just got to run away from it. I don't see anywhere that I can... <laughs> Like, kind of go off to the side. Okay, go. Go, go, go. Oh, go! Like, here? There we go. Has that blocked my way back now, too? Yeah, I really thought... Oh, yeah, no, it just flattened everything. So even if I would have hidden behind this one as well... Okay. I feel like Indiana Jones right now. <laughs> Absolute badass. It would have been cooler if I made it the first time, but I thought that was uh, like a, a shelf or the terrain that we were hiding behind. What is this? Are we about to summon a giant? There is way more in this than I ever thought there would be. I really genuinely thought this was only going to be like a short horror or something. But definitely not. There's way more to this. It's probably because of like everything getting changed up since the original version, which I'm all for. Still nothing that we can really use. I guess it doesn't really matter at this point because whatever we're dealing with is toying with us. But I mean, just pick it up, you know? Just on the off chance that you can use something. I found an old ruin which offers some clues as to the events which transpired here. The territory around it is littered with dangerous traps and now I know why. It appears to be a place of sacrifice. <laughs> That's not what you want to read. 
Despite all my years of experience, I have to wonder how this kind of ancient place has remained unknown to us for so long. While exploring the region, I haven't found any indications that the sacrificial ritual was connected with any particular religion or satanic following, which makes the purpose of the sacrifice itself even more obscure and enigmatic. My experience investigating cults and zealous fanatics has consistently found a pattern of erratic disorganization, with followers living poorly and their hierarchy fragile. In contrast, this one seems to have been somewhat stable, which I believe is why they were able to remain self-sufficient and secluded. The clan's framework suggests that followers were not recruited, but indoctrinated from birth, with perhaps no experience or even knowledge of the outside world, creating strong bonds and family ties between members. Despite this place's sinister feel, the mystery of these people carries me along and deep within me. I wonder if I might uncover something more than just the history of events that have taken place here. When I finish this investigation, my legacy will be forever remembered in history as the researcher who uncovered the secrets from such an arcane place. So these people had no kind of interaction with anyone in the outside world, right, of this area. It was this place and this is everything they knew. Do we see something? Oh, is this another rune? That's gotta be another one. No? What is that? Just picking up random glowing rocks. That's never a good a good idea. Why is that one not the same color as the rest either? Oh, that's why. Oh, you shit! Where is it? I can't. It's like some kind of force stopping me from picking it up. Wait, there's more of them in there. Hold on. What is this? Crystal, it's shiny and warm to the touch. I hope I can find something more interesting to use this for, other than just putting it back where I found it. Yeah, no, don't put it back. I mean, we've already probably got radiation poisoning at this point, so we may as well keep hold of it. Oh, it's for this. And is that going to get rid of the darkness? Let's just pick this up then and carry it around with us. There we go. Five of six. Did something throw something from there, or did it just fall down? Can I pick another one up? I could really use those. And I can't pick that up either. That'd be so cool just to carry that around when we're going through the, the forest. Oh, here we go. Yeah, this looks like the, the route that we found earlier. Something's making a noise over there. That's enough of you birds. Oh, I hate this. Go, 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 go. Okay. Whoop. That wasn't there before. That definitely wasn't there before. I would have noticed that. Especially with that red glow. What is it? Is it bait? Oh, don't eat the apples. Oh, I mean, I suppose we would be, like, really hungry and super dehydrated. Can we not just pick that up? Oh, I'm just going to keep eating them. <laughs> well, it's not the weirdest thing that we've come across. I thought that was eyes there, like that, when it split between the tree. We're okay. These apples are poisoned. Of course they are. Go. No. Not again. No. Again. <gasps> Did she just smack the shit out of us with a bucket? Oh, there we go. The darkness is gone. All oh, the lights are on. Just ignore it. <laughs> the bucket will go away soon enough. <laughs> Toys. I'm so lonely up here. Sometimes I find a toy to play with, and for a while my boredom is subdued. Together we play games to test their worth. They lie, cheat, betray, and do anything to satisfy their own desires. 
They think of nothing but greed and cowardice. And it makes them so much fun to play with. But my toys are fragile. And my games always seem to break them. Then I'm all alone again. One day a stronger toy will come. And the real fun shall start. That is spoken like a true witch. <laughs> is that the teddy bear from the car at the beginning? Look at the roots as well. Like what we've been reading before. How it says it looks like they were blocking ways and things like that. I am noticing the deeper we go, the thicker the roots are getting. No. Is that the darkness there? We got the teddy bear. Let's see what it says. Wait. Sweet bear. Soft, cute, friendly. <laughs> For now, at least. Try this way. Don't really know what I'm hoping to find when I go to areas like this. I'm just having a look around, I guess. See if we can see something before it happens or... What? Why did our heart rate just kick up? That noise is such a panic noise, too. I wonder if any of you guys, like, feel that. When you hear a heart rate increase, it does make you, like, feel that tension. It's not just a noise that you would hear in a horror movie or a game or something. It genuinely does make you panic. Oh, was it you? I really want to get a look at you, though. Don't run away. <gasps> oh, no! I tried to clear that too. No. Do not crawl down here. Where are we now? Please tell me we're holding that and it's not doing that on its own. I feel like we're being messed with to a point now where we are slowly losing it. Like the fibers of our mind, that thread is being pulled just a little bit. At I saw that at a time. And everything we're experiencing is just slowly making everything unravel, right? We're feeling it more and more. Why does this look familiar? Might just be the fact that we've been in this place for a long time now. I do like... I do like the fact that it's not... Oh, is that a bear trap? Don't I need that? Hold on. Need the torso on the head. But that looks like something we should be taking. Oh, is that the scarecrow down there? Yeah, look at him. That could have been me, my footsteps. Can't pick that up either. But yeah, I do like the fact that it's not just like constant jump scares all the time. There is a slow build-up. You do see this entity, whatever it is, like out in the open. And sometimes that... <laughs> that does make the pressure of <laughs> carrying on a lot more stressful. Have I got to work my way around to that? Land on the tire. Oh, we did it. Nice. This way. Grab the note. Let's see what it says. I will save her. The situation in the settlement has become worse. I've decided that the time to act resolutely has come. For her sake. For Sarah. Tomorrow, I will take her from this settlement and leave as fast as possible. Then, I'm going to find a good place for her where she'll be able to start a new life. Not this sorry existence around these crazy people. The most dangerous person being her father. Yes, it sounds crazy, like 
I could definitely not say that. <laughs> but how can I raise my child with my wife when I can't even help Sarah? Sarah has always personified hope for me. She helped me to not ruin my life. Now it's my turn to fight for her happiness. Only when she is saved can I live for myself and my family. I will never stop until I save her. I don't remember that. Yeah, we've not been here before. For a second back there, it felt familiar, but... We've not been here. Oh, is that something in there? Oh! You <gasps> I said this! Oh, okay. You know what? No more. I know I'm not going to do this, but I'm never doing it again. I'm going to not manifest something that absolutely terrifies me. I I called that shit right from the start. I say I'm not going to do it again. I can't help myself. I have to say it out loud. <laughs> so I know it could happen. Just kick a square in the ch chin. Go. Did she turn the light off then to make me hurry up? Just keep going. What is going on with it? Look at the trees. They're like all folded over each other, <laughs> making like a tunnel. Really dark. Come on. Go, go, go. Yeah, I don't, don't like that. This tire's rolling and shit. Oh, get up there. Get that. <sighs> Drawings on the wall. While I was researching this place, I found strange drawings on the wall. It seems that these drawings tell a story. A story about an unknown force that revealed information about secret rituals to the humans that lived there many centuries ago. In this ritual, except the rune stones and other preparations, human sacrifice took the biggest role. It was a kind of trade. The sacrifice requires a pure soul, and through this ritual, people could receive a blessing and a sacred knowledge in return. But there is an important rule. The offering must desire to sacrifice their soul for the other people's sake. It was forbidden to make this ritual by force against the sacrifice's own will. It would open a way for an evil spirit that despises humankind and could easily manipulate their weaknesses. It seems that this rule was broken. There must be some reverse ritual that will banish the evil spirit from our world before it becomes too strong. So that's what we're seeing then. Somebody basically sacrificed themselves unwillingly and then this thing came through. Okay, let's keep it moving then. Let's see if there's <laughs> a ritual. We're probably going to be the sacri sacrifice, but... Let's see if we can make this thing happen. We've got a bunch of different twists and turns again. So, is... Okay, so this is where we saw that thing pop up in the, uh, in the window. And we move through the forest. So, we got a pooper over here. We got a cabin. Dead man's tree over there. A way round. Oh, so this actually shows things that we might find on the way around in this spot. What's that? Is that a teddy bear? Why's that little guy peeking? Do we still have that teddy bear with us? I don't think we do. All the bear traps. What has happened down there? Grab the axe. Okay, before we go in there, I just want to have a quick look. Up this side. The hell of a spot to put a toilet. more homes over there. Definitely feel like that thing is here. Like it's peeking at us right now. Hello? Oh, shit. If we got... Somebody been making poison out of the mushrooms. Which room was the teddy bear in? This one? 
Teddy bear's gone. See, I'm still not learning my lesson. I'm still putting my face against the glass. Oh, what? No. I'm not opening the door. That wasn't there before, was it? Oh, please don't come alive. Are you one of the wolves that we heard about before? Cut that shit out. I'm not answering the door. I'm picking up this rifle. <laughs> Who are you? I was heartless. Please don't do anything, okay? I mean, no disrespect. I just really want this boomstick. Please. Oh, look at all this stuff. I wonder if you were the hunter of the village that we've read about the uh, in the letters. Final hunt. Okay, here we go. Only endless darkness is around me. I loaded my weapon, but I'm not sure if it will help me to defend myself from this thing that we awakened. That deer, he didn't look the same as he did during our previous meetings. Once majestic, now he looks like the living dead, with bare skin that makes his insides visible, and evil lifeless eyes. This animal no longer embodies life and nature, but rather death and darkness. I can see him through my window. He's watching me from afar, same as I watched him a few weeks ago. I feel cornered, like the animals that I used to hunt, but unlike them, I can choose for myself when I'm going to die. Rustling near my window, distracting me from my thoughts. It wasn't a deer. Somebody else was trying to get inside my house. The knocking stopped too. We really need to pick that up. <gasps> oh my! Wait. Oh, it's like when I try and pick. <gasps> yeah, when I try and pick that up, I can't. <laughs> oh. Anything in these? Well, I guess we're about to find out what it is. Should we shove our face against the glass? No. Open it. Oh. I don't know. Oh, shit. Can I give you this as an offering? There you go. Okay, okay, okay. I've just realized there's rabbit markers everywhere. Oh, the fast knocking like that. Shit. No. Oh. Wait, what? I don't know what you're trying to tell me to do. I can't make my own rabbit. Definitely not going in there. Can't go in there. Oh my <gasps> fu- Oh! Whoa! Super lightheaded. Alright. Let's try this again. So... I'm guessing that there is a choice that we have to make there. There's three choices. For no, wait, that's four choices then. Oh, man, I nearly blew out my voice box then when I screamed. That scared me so, so bad. Okay, so, yeah, that thing definitely isn't there. This that's at the door. So we've got this one. Ooh. Got the carrot on the floor too. We can put it on there. I think the pot in this room has one too. Yeah, I saw that one. I thought I saw something then. We've got... Behind the wolf. And then the shotgun. Something's telling me it's probably that one to maybe make more with, or... I don't know how that's going to work. Hold on, let me just try and work this out in my, my brain real quick. So the wolf starts growling. I can't distract that any other way. I think I've just simply got to make a choice. 
But I kind of want to see all of them. Okay. I mean, we saved back there, so worst case scenario, we'll, <laughs> we'll just carry on a little bit. I really do want to see these, so here we go. All right, little guy. Well, there's no escape for me there with all the bear traps, so let's pick you up. And... Oh, there's no growl this time. Yeah, let's try this one. Again, I'm pretty sure it's that one back there that we got to do, or the shotgun. So, <laughs> and here's where we see if, <laughs> if it's the right or wrong answer, which I'm pretty sure it's wrong. Brace yourself, guys. Did we hear that before? a little bit of light coming through the door. Oh, what are we going to see? Oh, yeah, there it is. Oh, that's, it still got me again. Oh, okay. There we go. Answer the door. Grab the rabbit. Okay, this time around, we're going to throw it near the shotgun. Where do we place... steps behind me then. Oh, it was the door. Okay. We good? Can't imagine we're good. It's almost taunting me say here, little piggy, with that noise that it does. Yeah, look. That's definitely not the right answer. So it is that one over there. I did want to see them all, though. Here we go. Yep, okay, that time it didn't scare me. That noise, that little, like, that short growl or the breath thing it does. Whew, I think you guys might be able to hear it. My voice is going right now. I hope you guys don't mind me doing that, by the way, like testing out what they all do because otherwise you'd miss it sometimes i do like doing that to see what happens but yeah in this case i really wanted to know what happened all right let's try this one then if this one doesn't work i've got no idea where to put this thing and it... oh is it showing its teeth <laughs> you're not really scaring me big guy Okay, the doors are all open. Wait, what? See? Two things just happened. One, this made like a really calming sound. So you can go like... And let your guard down. And then almost immediately after that, there was a knock that happened behind us. So what, did we... Did we release some kind of spirit or something? Is that what that's saying there? Feels like that was... The right choice! Oh, shit. Oh, did you free us? We got another rune. There we go. We gotta get three more of those things. Holy shit. <laughs> My voice will not last that long. We're gonna keep it going, though. I really wanna know where this goes to. Hopefully you guys <laughs> are fully along for the ride as well. This is gonna be a long one. It's down there. I don't care, I'm not going that way. Oh, we... Oh, is that Scarecrow over there? We really, really need an altar right now. <gasps> oh my god! What was that? Oh, did I run into a fucking trap? Oh, you idiot. Okay. Oh, it's these. There's bear traps scattered everywhere. Okay, I haven't really had to look down this entire time. How did we make it that far through that? Okay, here we go. Ray of hope. 
In my childhood, I learned two lessons. The first I learned from my father. He'd tell me a simple rule, that you need to fight for happiness. And this fight may not be heroic, like it's told in my books. For happiness needs to be fought for with fists, and one must be ready to sink their teeth into it. The second lesson I came to understand by myself, via life throwing me together with doubtful people. There are people that are used to living in the swamp, and they will drag you there with them. Or, you can liberate them from such dilapidated lives. For this purpose, you don't need to be their friend. You only need to be able to control them. At a young age, I was leader of different social groups. We positioned everybody to be afraid of us and made even the stronger kids scared. We supported each other and were strong like a wall, but despite this, it was difficult to tell that we were friends. In my older age, I controlled people that tried to use me. I was always more cunning and could control them through their lies. I positioned them to think that they were in control of the situation so that I could make their vigilance weaker. So that in the end, I was the one who controlled them. I'm not complaining about my young age. On the contrary, it was pretty bright and allowed me to grow into a hardened character that people need later in their lives. Unfortunately, I was never really close with people. Friends, for me, is just a word. They're more like minions to me. To talk about women, I've had some companionship, but there's never been real love in these relationships. It wasn't until she entered my life, stumbled into my hands, to be correct. That's how we met. Her clumsiness was kind of cute, and my vigilance and strong hands never let her fall. She came to understand that I am the only person that will always hold her in solid hands and give an embrace that will keep her secure. But my opinion of her naive clumsiness was wrong. She had the same steel character as I, but with that, she was also full of light and kindness. That was enough for both of us. With her, I was able to see a new view on life and have new thoughts that never came in my head before. It was the greatest happiness that destiny brought to me. And I'm going to fight to keep this happiness, as my father taught me. I will not let this fire of our love dim. We are happy together, and it will last forever. Okay, I'm not seeing any more bear traps. Is that another rune? We'll take it. Oh my! That's three out of five. Oh, you're good. Oh, there she is. Look at that. <gasps> And she let the scarecrow down on us. What have been really creepy there is if one of the eyes, the buttons, just fell out. <laughs> As we were moving it off of our face. She's still gonna be there? Nope. I have been trying to check certain areas that when we go down into like caves and stuff, to see if she's just like crouched, like leaning over looking at us, but I've not really been able to catch it. Oh, good. More choices. I think I gotta place that bear in another area like before. Oh, actually, no, I held onto it earlier, didn't I? Okay. During all my years, I could easily control other people's lives, but I never could handle my own. Only she felt real to me. Our relationship was like something out of a romance novel. She was like me, a strong person, but lost. We were evolving with our relations and becoming stronger, but because of my idiotic character, it fell apart. I tried to resist, but my nature was too strong. I was taking her under my control. I couldn't be happy enough with her affection. I wanted her to become completely mine. I wanted all her thoughts and emotions to be under my control. That sounds so creepy though. We started to separate, but Sarah's birth made our love tight again. Unfortunately, it was short lived as my wish to control things was projected to my daughter also. Okay, so they're aware of it then. My wife was too kind to her. Our daughter is a bright person, but fragile for this cruel world. I didn't want this world to swallow her and change her as it happened with me. This is why I did all that I could to protect her. The choice to protect her held me away from my beloved one. We became strangers to each other, and I started to search for my soulmate in other women. This is really, really sad. Basically how... I guess a family's being ripped apart. 
I mean, there is selfish actions involved, but... Yeah, it's still sad. I'm really trying not to let my guard down with what I'm reading as well, because... It's so easy... <laughs> What's going on there? It's so easy to do that. Get through those bushes. Nothing good ever comes from being in long grass like this. Nothing. Okay, we got a fire over there. So we got a couple of ways we can go. Let's try this one real quick. Oh, is there an altar there? Oh, please tell me that's an altar. I've not been looking around for bear traps. <laughs> I should be. <laughs> oh, no! No! Oh, my God! I don't want to talk about it, guys. Okay. I'm stressed. I've blown my voice out. <laughs> I need to get some, like, tea and honey or something. There it is. Oh, they do go off as well. Okay, so once they go off, they can't get you again. Okay, so full disclosure, I did just take a short break just so I could get myself a warm drink with some honey in it because I could feel my voice box going. Another bear trap there. And I really don't want my voice giving out. Wait, which way do we come from? Back over that side. So we were going this way, right? Yeah, because we turned around to get this altar. So back this way and then right. Okay, stop sprinting through these areas. You've already learned your lesson once. I guess I should keep an eye out for any kind of trap, though, because we have been strung up in the past, like with the scarecrow in that swamp area. Nothing around here. I don't like going off the trail like this, but feel like I'm missing something. I don't care. Let's just keep things moving. Is that figure showing itself? <gasps> oh! Oh! <laughs> I barely caught that. I only really saw it because of the, uh, the rope that was attached to it. Get around it. There we go. So eyes open everywhere then. Got it. Let's go get this. I'm so paranoid now. That thing is everywhere. Oh, there we go. There's a note. Wait. We sneak past. Okay. Illusion of happiness part two. People say that only by losing something can you understand how important it was to you. I came to understand these words through a very sad experience. When my beloved died, all our happy moments came back to haunt me. My love for her was boiling as strong as it was during our first date, but it was too late. In her last moments, I felt like a useless worm. I tried to retain the image of a strong leader for my people and for Sarah's sake. I needed to show them that I could stand strong on my own two feet. But inside, my heart was broken, and I felt wasted. I couldn't do anything instead of watching how my wife was slowly dying. When our relationship became weaker, I searched for a new love and started dating another woman, instead of fighting for our happiness, as I promised. I feel very ashamed that I couldn't change myself for her, not giving up on her. Then she left me, and Sarah. After I lost my wife, hatred consumed me. Hatred on this incomplete world that changed me made me such a monster and took me from the most important person in my life. But I will not let this world take Sarah too. I will save her. I made two promises. The first is to take care of Sarah and not allow this corrupt world to break her spirit. Second is to never give up and never let anybody control me. I am ready to challenge the entire world and change it, no matter how it will cost me. It's definitely pulling on the emotional strings right now. You're starting to feel what a lot of the people went through. But I'm trying to stay on track because I don't want to be I don't want to become part of this place. We still have to get to our mother, right? I know this is probably a huge part to what's going on, like Potentially a... I don't want to say it, but I think it's like a grieving process. But we need to get out of this place. Wherever we are. Okay, origin of the spirit. 
In addition to research of the rituals, I've also tried to reveal the spirit's origin. What is his target? From where has he appeared? Who is he? Unfortunately, instead of answers, I only found more questions. If only I could know more about him, maybe that would give me a tip on how to resist him. He despises humans, thinking that he's higher than us. He feels our weaknesses, how fragile we are, and how he knows how easily we can be broken by our own emotions and feelings. The strongest and best of us have piqued his interest, as these people symbolize the greatest things inside us, which he seeks to corrupt the most. The rest of my findings consist of my own weak theories. I hypothesize that the spirit was once human, and, corrupted by this cruel world, became a creation obsessed with revenge. Or perhaps, it was a godlike creature, tricked by humans that craved power imprisoned by them. Maybe our human nature of selfishness and will for power and control has caused him to despise us so greatly. I can make hundreds of theories like these, but what's the point? Such thoughts don't yield me any results, and my racing mind has made me begin to wonder what point there is in so desperately fighting for survival. When thinking clearly, I remember that I care more about my legacy than my life. And for this, I will keep fighting. Right, there we go. Got the altar. Wait, is this another one? Oh, I despise you. Oh. See, it's those things, though. It's... It's so well done, but I don't want to give it credit. <laughs> because... I'm so used to everything being built up, this tension where you're wound so tight, and then that's when the jump scare comes. Doing it this way is so much more powerful. At least it's my weakness anyway. Just not expecting it like that, and then... <laughs> like I always say, my body does that weird thing where it, like, cramps up. Oh, please. Oh, no! No! Oh, what? Did you guys see that? That thing was upside down and its face was like here. I don't really know the significance of the teddy bear, though. Like, I know in the beginning sequence, whatever this thing is, I'm going to call it a demon. It, it had that teddy bear in its hand. Is this the child of who we've been hearing about? Oh, look at it up there. I don't know if you guys caught that. Then he was just peeking again. Right, that's where we fell. So it's brought us back. So it might be tormenting us, but it definitely wants us to show something. Oh, that was just leaves, I thought. <laughs> Let me show you guys. When I went past there, look at that. Just out the corner of your eye, you just see this. <laughs> I thought something was just crouched down. <gasps> Okay. Oh. That'll do it. Okay, so we got another map. Where are we? So we are here. So over to the right. So are we on the opposite side of that lake where we were before? Or is there just like monster things everywhere in the water? Right, either way, I'm going to go to the right side and round this way. Because I want to know what all that is. Yeah, I said it before, but this is... Way, way longer than I ever thought it would be. There we go. Got ourselves another altar. Remember not to pick up the fake ones. Because <laughs> that thing will snatch your soul every time. Look at all this. There's a body of water there that we'd no doubt get across. Alright, what's this? Obsession and success. During my first days here, I met what remained of the new guests who visited this place before me, but their corpses didn't stay long. I don't know how they are disappearing. Maybe darkness swallows them. Or that sinister girl took them somewhere. The fact is, if you die in this place, you disappear from this world. During my research, I found that for the reverse ritual, you need to collect all parts of the sacrificed body. Okay, so that's what we're doing. Searching for them was some kind of game. At first... I felt like a madman, searching for remains of a dead body. But now, when I look at them inside my bag, I feel like I am a collector, finally completing his collection. Yeah, that's what we feel like now. Almost like we are being helped. That's why I keep saying. The more remains I find, the more I learn about this place. 
it's like they guide me through the pages of their story. I think it's not a coincidence that their remnants were in places that played a significant role in the victim's life. After that, I found a runestone. Finding it was really a headache. Also, I found out that the fire in the altars inflicts the dark girl and makes her more aggressive. My intuition inclined me to extinguish these lights to make myself more secure. Hopefully nothing will disturb me during my preparations for the reverse ritual. Wait, so they're doing the opposite of what I think they are? Lately, I have managed to avoid the dark girl. It's become a game where I'm winning. Few pieces are left. Soon enough, I will stop the curse of this forsaken forest. And maybe even get the opportunity to discover the sacred knowledge and power the forest's ancient civilization was keeping here. Even the thought of this makes me excited. Gives me the feeling of invincibility. I'm sure I'll survive. I have become a part of this place and adjusted to it. Hmm. Why do I feel there is going to be no escape from this? This game. As we keep reading. We're collecting all the bones. We're collecting all the runes. And like I said at the beginning, I don't think it's for us. <laughs> Eyes open for traps. Okay, there we go. Oh. So how many runes do we have? Let's have a look. So we got to get two more runes and one more... I guess bone, which I thought I'd need too, like the torso and the head, but maybe we don't. Yeah, I definitely don't want to go in there. Oh. That's our scarecrow friend again. Look at that though, yeah, we're never getting home. There's just no way. Not seeing any more traps there. No bear traps in the way. All right, what we got? Wait. Wasn't that a scarecrow friend here a second ago? Okay, so we can go down there. There's something behind me over there. Okay, so we got two altars. And a fishing rod. Oh, wait, no way. Am I going to have to grapple some kind of monster out of the water or something that's got a bone in it? New world is near. The last few weeks have been very rough. We started preparing for the day. The day that will change everything. Because of Yan and a few settlers that doubt my plan, ritual preparations are becoming harder. I have sent a few loyal followers to watch them and keep them on distance. Unfortunately, because of my preparations, I can't spend as much time with Sarah as I would have liked. I understand there is no need to be sad, and I hope she does too. Sarah will not leave me. Because of the mission that Sarah's destiny is prepared for, when the ritual is complete, we will spend even less time together. But she will be happier. I'm going to fix all my mistakes, and will let my daughter fly freely from the nest. I will stop controlling her and let her make this world a better place. Oh, listen. Please don't be fake. Okay, we're good. Don't know what that did. That didn't feel like an altar. Okay, we can't use the, the fishing rod. Oh, what did we do? Did we just release the darkness? Oh, he's draining the lake. I think. Yeah, look, it's exposing all this. Okay, there's something on the end of the line. Am I going to have to climb around and get that? Because I definitely don't want to go in that water. We've seen <laughs> what can be in there. All kinds of monsters, or at least it sounds that way. Yeah, okay, he's not really got any kind of jumping puzzle, so it's just revealed an area. Ooh. Is that another rune over there? Go around this way, see if we can grab that. There's still quite a lot of water down there. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about going into that if I have to. That's such a 
cool effect. It's like something passing through us. Here we got a shoe or a welly boot. <laughs> Nothing that we can really use. I don't think there's anything in there. So I guess that was just to get across this then? I don't think I've missed anything. Oh, what was that? I was looking up here, for looking for traps. What was it? Just waiting for anything to happen. Uh, ourselves another cabin. I would really hope... Hold on a second. Can we not go through... I'd hope that we could kind of tear the uh, the maps off the side of those things we've been finding. Will this fall as well? No. Just so we can see which way the uh, the route is taking us. Because it is easy to forget. There's so many ways you can go. Check this way first. Okay. It's doing that. I don't know why it's flickering from. Oh, <gasps> okay. Oh my god. So this is going to be a death pit there. Got it. All right. So <laughs> not only do we just have to watch out for bear traps now and like swinging death logs, there is genuine like death pits that have been made. All right. Let's go back into the cabin and let's see what's here. At least. At least we know that now. <laughs> Hello? Ooh. I just heard something. <gasps> okay. There's music playing. And open that. Incredibly creepy seeing those. Don't play. Why did you lead me in here? What did you want me to find? Oh, that was another rune. Nice. Okay, so I've got to go around the other way of the, uh, the walkway that we saw before. And I think we can get the last one. And then it's just finding the last bone. Don't you dare. I knew you were going to pull some shit like that. I knew it. See, this is going to be a bait, though. And there's going to be an even bigger one when we get to the end here. Okay, brace. I knew it! I knew you were going to... noise that like I can't quite describe it. it's like a, a growl I hate everything about it I'm not doing it I'm not playing the stupid games hey big guy what are you doing in there you get anything I can get rid of this thing with did it just turn the light out Cannot see a thing. <gasps> oh shit! What was I just got? Oh, it was a rake. Like <laughs> when you stand on like a, the head of a rake and it flicks up. Oh no no! Pick something up. I know it, it might not help. What is it? Is it iron? I think you can swing through a spirit and it might give you a little bit of time. No, I feel like that's death if I go through there. Let me just double check I'm not missing anything. No, can't open anything. Look at that. <coughs> Get out. Oh! Wait, did that just pass through us? Are we dead? 
Pick up that sickle. See, we start to get a tiny little bit... Oh, sounds like something's playing music in there. We sound like we're getting on track to what's going on. And then it just leaves you with more questions. I guess that is a good sign of, like, storytelling, but... Once it gets a little bit complicated, especially when you've got to worry about so many scares, I do struggle a little bit with keeping track of stuff. That's why I'm... S <gasps> okay, I, I even saw that. That's so <laughs> That's why I try and stay on track with... Our focus is just getting from point A to point B. We need to get out of the forest. And in order to do that, we have to play this silly game that's being put in front of us. Right, the last room was down here, but what are the odds <laughs> that this thing is going to give out and we're going to fall and break our ass into that death pit down there? Easy does it. Really light-footed. Oh, it was the teddy bear. It wasn't even a rune. Okay, well, we got him. Is this going to be enough to calm the demon down? Whoa, why did that show up? Sweet bear, soft, cute, and friendly. Okay. I don't think we've seen anywhere yet that we have to put this down, so... We'll just continue on. I haven't got the hops to make it across that. I hope there's no more of those stupid rakes just laying around everywhere. Look at this. It's like the slow impact as well, like, stupid. <laughs> it's like the game's telling you that. Oh. oh. <gasps> no way did it just show me that that thing was going to throw a pitchfork at my head. Do we still have the bear? Just in case you guys didn't catch that, I will do it again, but I'll move. Well, I'll try. It shows up like down there. It peeks up. And then we look in this. Look at that! Oh, you shit! Oh, give me this. That's some kind of, like, fourth wall right there. Like, some Final Destination shit. Knowing your own death right before it happens. But again, that's so cool, that. The fact that that's even in there. Most people will miss it. Well, a lot of people will, I guess. Just running past that to try and get to the next section. I love stuff like that. All right, where's that death pit? It was like, was it easily visible? Oh, okay, so we can see it now because we've uncovered it. So this was the correct way. Is that another pit there? Not seeing anything else. Cool little spot, but I don't feel like hanging around here too long. Where are we gonna put this bear? Ooh. Feel like this is a ri really bad spot. Hello? Oh. They're going to give way. We got a book and a page. All right, here we go. Resurrection. Oh, no. What is this? Sarah is scared. She doesn't understand what's going on, but I don't blame her. She always was so naive. Good thing that I always knew what I must do. It was my decision to stay in this place after the railroad was finished. When I found those ancient ruins, I started to hear this voice. The voice that guided me and helped me to make my decisions. So you've basically been fooled into doing something which has released evil. My daughter, Sarah, will be our beacon of hope. After her resurrection, she and her pureness will recreate our world and fix all the mistakes that drew into this abyss. I am a prophet and Sarah is our hope. Soon, the results of my work will grow and the harvest of our efforts will improve this world. You're sounding even more insane with this. I mean, clearly you were... 
You were definitely guided into this. Into whatever madness this has become. And it's all bad what you're doing. You're going to release pain and misery onto everyone. Me first, because I'm in this stupid place. I do like these, though. All these, like, graphics and stuff, they, they generally don't make sense, and then you catch one. And then it kind of... It's like a throwback to something earlier that you found. I want to take that hat, too. You know, we have done a lot of, like, Indiana Jones stuff in this, especially with that big old rolling ball. Let's continue on. Watch the floor, watch the trees. See, there's another path here. Is this a bait to go this way and then this is going to be death? I don't mind seeing the traps, though. They are kind of cool. It's just that, though. It's seeing them. <laughs> it's not that easy. It's not electrified in some way, right? <laughs> don't have that? All right, let's keep going. Well, look at that. That whole area just there. I was so tense and stressed about something happening. And nothing was there, at least from what I can tell. But that is how you create tension. That's how you create pressure on a player. To want to keep going. To tread lightly into the next area. As much as there's... Ooh. Ooh, we got the, the final piece of the bone. That red glow usually indicates that that's another piece of bone. Is this the exit? Oh. oh, where are you going? Give me a pitchfork. Oh, I don't want to go in there. Yeah, look, it's all been leading up to this. Let's double check what we have. So I'm guessing that's a rune in there, or it could be a bone on the right. That's something that we got to do with them. Oh, look at this. <gasps> oh, shit. This is going to be dying of fire. What are you doing? What did you just do? Oh, you pointed this way. You want me to go down there? I don't want to. <laughs> go away. Oh, I hate those things. Enduring toy. I try to warn him, but he won't even try to listen. His self-confidence and arrogance doesn't let him think straight. He can't even recognize that he's doing exactly what the creature under the shadows wants him to do. If I don't do anything, then the situation will be catastrophic. I don't have enough power. I can't do it by myself. This toy makes me sick. His ego and cavalier self-confidence are as annoying as scratching on glass. My puppet master doesn't want me to break this toy. It should play a big role in his plans. This toy must think it's so important and soon will be free. They're talking about us, I think. And in the same moment, it'll only go straight to the gallows, without even recognizing the destiny awaiting it. It seems that Puppet Master will even release me when this toy has played his part. I want to rest so badly, but at the same time, I prefer to see how this toy will suffer. I will not let the Puppet Master finish his game. He's taken too much from me. He thinks he can control me like my daddy. The rage he wanted to make stronger in me ironically freed me from his chains for a while. It is time for me to take something from him. I will need to use a method that my good side would never be able to do. I will break this toy. It is time to make that curious toy take a rest. Okay, maybe they're not talking about us then. I'm guessing that it's because this toy is going to be used in the ritual, so it's now sacred and part of the plans of this thing. You guys can hear that. It's it's above us. Oh, I don't know what that is. I don't want to look. 
Let's break this fucking tie and get out of this place. Could be the teddy bear they were referring to. Oh, yeah, there it is. Oh, I thought we were going to place something in there and then that thing came out again. So it's trying to stop us now then. on the top of that. Oh, what? <gasps> so, whatever that thing is, we did pick it up. There's a note left for us. Right, before we read that, very quickly want to just read what this is. Runestone, ritual element. So, we have everything now. Apart from the final bone for that. Okay. But I think there's another area outside that we need to look at too. Oh, what is this? <laughs> okay. Right this way. That wasn't there before. What is going on there? Oh, it's a rat. Okay. Wait. No, I'm not falling for that. You're under there. I know it for a fact. You're definitely... No, I'm not doing that. Tell me that doesn't look like some kind of... Like SCP as well. Our friend, the Scarecrow. Give me the key. And that's for the gate, too. Wait, there's something there, though. How do we get that? Maybe we have to go around? It's all tied up. It's like... Maybe it's around the back of this. I just simply walk around this way? Okay, there we go. I didn't want to leave that. Please tell me we can grab it. It was a trick. You hear the giggling? Don't do it. Please don't do it. Don't throw anything or don't put a trap here. Face your fears. Oh, I can hardly sprint. I see you! All your tricks, all the bullshit. Let the scarecrow go. Hasn't done anything to deserve this. Okay. Saver, part one. I woke up from the heart-rending screams. There was nothing except deep darkness all around. All of this settlement was swallowed in this waltz of madness. Am I still sleeping? Sarah, I must find her as soon as possible. I only hope that this nightmare didn't take her. While I was searching for Sarah, I found some kid. He was around 10 years old. I didn't recognize him. I don't remember any young people in our settlement except Sarah. He looked like he wasn't real. Same as everything around here. Despite this, I couldn't leave him alone in such place. He was very scared and helpless. The boy told me he was living with his mother who was taken by a dark creature. He called this creature the Spirit of Forest. When I asked him if his father was still alive, he looked at me with an expression in his eyes I couldn't comprehend. I wanted to find Sarah, but I still needed to help this kid. That's why I decided to first take him from this cursed place and then go back for my Sarah. While we were walking, I screamed a name and hoped to find her during our way. But the child asked me to stop. Stop doing it. If you keep screaming like that, the Spirit of the Forest will find us, he said in hushed whispers. He was so anxious and fearful that I had no other choice than to stop calling her. Who is this spirit of the forest? It seems the poor kid is so scared that his mind created some illusionary monster. In any case, I should hurry up. Nope. I think that kid knows what's going on. 
And usually in cases like this, when it comes to paranormal, always comes across like the younger, the more sensitive you are to stuff like this. So you should listen and don't be stubborn. <laughs> Pay attention. Oh, get in there. That is 100% about to give way. Let's just go. We got this. Oh! Oh, go! Go! No! Where the hell is this? Oh no, what are you doing? Why does this look like a place where somebody would take shelter and hide? So we're obviously deep in the, in the cave section that we saw before. we saw before. Is this just the emotions of the spirit? <laughs> I'm half waiting for something to happen. A lot of birds down there. I could dig my... Oh, no, no. Spoke too soon. Get... No, oh, no. Oh. See, I was super confident about that. I could dig my heels in the back of that. I'd just slide down it. And my whole body went limp. <laughs> the minute I went off the side of that. Let's go. Oh, look at that with the rain coming down. Again, I'm going to really give this credit where it's due. Creating this atmosphere which is just not constant jump scares in your face. There are definitely been scares. But this way of storytelling sometimes can get very confusing because there's there's certain ways that you have to think about where it wants you to go rather than what you think it is. And a lot of the time that's where I confuse myself. But in terms of like the graphical fidelity of this and this engine, which I still believe is on the cry engine. It looks so good. It's been really cool being back in this. Like an old or nostalgic way of how horror used to be. Which I do miss. I really do. Don't get me wrong. Some of the newer stuff... Oh, look at that. There's the settlement. Again, I wonder if that is kind of from... Or the inspiration for this is taken from Roanoke. If you don't know the story about that, by the way, it's, it's incredible. But yeah, this has been so, so cool. And definitely a trip down memory lane too. For anyone that has experienced those older horror games, hopefully it's kind of give you that feeling too watching. Where are we going? Do we still have the teddy bear? Yeah, we do. We still have the, the last part too. Yeah, this, the rune stone. So is it all leading up to this? Clearly, there's a lot of unanswered questions with Sarah, with the father too. I'm hoping that the spirit isn't Sarah trapped in this place because of what her father did, still controlling her in this life. Here we go. See, I'm on edge now whenever I see stuff like that. I had a damn pitchfork launched at my head last time. So we are here. And this is the lake we're next to. So we can go around that way. There's a couple of branches that we can definitely check out here. So there's the settlement that we just overlooked. The birds. Maybe that's what we saw kind of just coming off the trees. And there's 
something at the top of this. All right. If we got... Ooh, what is that? Is that the scarecrow just hanging out again? That's the day. We're not going to have to fight that thing. I literally don't have anything. Maybe these rune stones will be enough to keep it away. Something up there too. Hey, big guy. Just relaxing. Oh, look at that scary face he's doing. <laughs> Alright, give me that. We got a light sauce now. What have you got here? What's this? Sausages, cucumbers, eggs. A little bit of bread. What's in that? If anybody knows what that says, let me know. Let's have a look around. Nope. Nope. I can feel that already pushing me into the water there. I'm not doing that. Can I select this, though? Shiny warm to the touch. I can find something more interesting to use this for. Okay, so it's going to be for putting up there, I think. You know those, like, kind of holders, the stands that we put one in before? I think it's going to be for that. I was saying that before, though. Should have picked up a few more. can feel something is going to happen here now. Whenever you have a significant amount of time where nothing's happening and everything seems to be going your way, this has had a very, very consistent habit of just snatching that away from you and just letting you know you're never fully in control. So always be on alert. Can we get across this? Here we go. forest. So cool. Got another altar there. Watch out for traps. Just another look out onto the settlement. Oh yeah, closer look. Right, let's get this. Why are all these traps set off as well? going to find the bones of someone that has attempted this before. A different sacrifice that didn't quite make it. An altar up there. Nope. Not doing that. I'm not going to be falling off no <laughs> cliff today. I've done enough of that, to be, on to be honest. and get to the top of this. Oh, look at that. Looking out onto that settlement from here. Whole bunch of shit that way. I know this creepy thing is just going to be waiting for me. It's going to... Yep. It's going to be peeking round the corner when I get right up here. Oh, there we go. There's the cabin. Plush Hope. I remember that day, the day when my mother gave him to me. In an instant, this plush bear became my favorite toy. He was always near me. When my mother was gone, this toy had a new meaning for me. With him, I always remember how my mom loved and took care of me. This toy became my eternal memory of her. After my dad changed, this teddy bear became my comfort and ray of light. But near my 18th birthday, my teddy bear was lost. I don't understand how it happened. I was always very careful with him. His toy was always near me. My father didn't even want to listen about my supplication to help find him. He was too busy with problems that he felt more important. I felt that someone took this teddy bear from me and didn't let me find him. I lost not just a toy with this teddy. I lost all warm feelings that this toy represents. I'm still hoping to find it, but more days are passing. And the more I have a feeling that I will probably never find it again. It feels that everything happening around me is not going to change as it has before. So that's the significance that the toy has then. Okay, well that explains it. That's kind of what I was thinking too. With her being this spirit that we've been seeing. Wait. 
Can we pick up more than one there? I hope I haven't missed any back where we've just come from. There's another one down there. I think there's one up there too, so what will that be for? Go and get them. You already know there's going to be some bullshit on the way to getting these things. Or <laughs> it's going to save that final crescendo right... Oh, shit! <sighs> you know what? That didn't even <gasps> scare me. Oh! Yeah, you would definitely turn... Oh, look at you wearing the hat now. We're good. Just ourselves off. Let's keep it going. We've come this far. Stupid thing isn't going to stop us now. I knew that, though. I knew it. Wasn't predictable, but you could feel it coming. You're basically telling me there that you're about to mess with me in some way. I'm glad that I was ready for it then. <laughs> I did get a little bit stressed when it looked like we were falling off the side of that, but... I'm glad we were ready for it. Okay, let's go this way. Oh, oh I didn't check. Oh my god. I would be the worst Indiana Jones. See? This is what always terrifies me, guys. Whenever I say stuff like, oh god, I'd love to go explore it. Oh my fuck. Usually it opens up and it stays that way, but it, <laughs> it didn't that time. Got me twice. You can't train stupid. I get it. Okay, hold on. Checking everywhere. Bear traps. Swinging things of death. And we're good. It was over here. Just double, triple checking that tree. Get it. Oh no! I've got to go all the way back down to get that. Okay, secrets. I don't want to have secrets. Sometimes when we share our secrets with people, it makes us closer and our bond stronger, but some secrets create doubt and destroy trust. My father has many secrets. One day, I was walking in the settlement and saw a boy looking at me from a window. He looked only 12 years old. He looked very sad. I wanted to cheer him up. I smiled and waved at him, but he just closed the curtains and went away. Something made me curious. This boy was very young, but his eyes looked like a grown man's. I started to visit this place more often. I wanted to see this boy again. When my father found out about it, he became angry and forbade me to come close to that house again. But his warning just raised my curiosity. One day, I saw how my father entered that boy's house. He looked unhappy. He wasn't there too long. Soon enough, he came out with a woman I'd never seen before. Who is that kid? And how is my father connected with this woman? Secrets around my father are mountain. Obvious answers come to my head, but I try to ignore them. Upon reflection, they would explain my mother's sudden sadness. Well, I'm assuming because... Your dad said he tried to move on from your mum. I'm guessing that's the other woman. Right, we've got to go right to the bottom of this thing. I saw you there. Oh, now you reveal it. Look at this shit. <laughs> now you are playing with my mind. What is this? Right, let's go all the way back. Let's just brace ourselves. There's probably been a trap that's set back up. Straight down. Stick to the stone so the wood can't give way. I was just going to say, the minute that I try and pick this thing up, there's going to be like a giant boulder coming down. Ready? Get it. Go. Okay. Let's just keep going. I know that thing's done something. Scarecrow's gone too. Go this way. There should be one right here. There we go. Does it not give us a count of how many we've got? No.
Anyone else getting Tom Hanks cast away? You guys know the scene. When Chuck tested it. What? In the snake is happening there. <laughs> I'm not saying it. <laughs> I know you guys are going to say it in the comments. Oh, get it over with. So what you're saying is if I pick that up, it's going to be death. And if I don't pick it up, the voices in my head are never going to let me hear the end of it. So... Oh, it's a bucket within a bucket. Oh, shit. Okay, we're, it's the end. This is it. This is how it ends. Is that why... Is that just a plate of shit? That is. That's just a, just a curly turd on the plate. What? Okay, let's... Let's take our chances over by the water. What? the hell is that? Go, go, go. During my exploration, I found some strange crystals. They glow strongly in the dark and have an incredibly unique structural composition. While I was collecting them, I thought only of how much I could sell such strange rocks for. Thank goodness I collected them. They became my salvation. The darkness in this place can easily kill you. Yeah, we've seen. <laughs> Even a few seconds without light, and you will hear voices. Feel their eyes following you deep in the shadows. Even catch a glimpse of their evil, smiling faces. In the darkness, sanity flows from you like water through a sieve. Trapped in the suffocating darkness, I remembered the crystals and took one in my hand, but they were too dim to penetrate the shadows. I felt a breath on the nape of my neck, and all my hair stood on end. I dropped frantically to the ground, searching around trying to find something to defend myself with. I picked up what felt like a stick. I used the crystal's light as a makeshift flashlight. From its dim light, I saw that I'd picked up some kind of scepter, and at the top was a hollow, the perfect size to place the crystal in. Following my instincts, I placed the gem into the crevice, and at once the crystal's light beamed brighter. It made the darkness, I think that's supposed to be wear off or go away. The scepter became weighed down by the energy. I couldn't take it with me. I pushed it into the ground. So that's what we have been seeing then. I, I even said that before, like, why not just take that around with us? As I explored, I found more. I tried to stay as close to them as possible. It's the only way to fight off the darkness. Okay, good to know. So if we see them, stay within close proximity to them. Or if we see, I guess, the scepters that we place the crystals in, that's going to help us fight the darkness off when... I'm guessing we get to the big bad over there. Came from that way. It's the bucket of shit. Nothing. Just on the ground. So we got these two here that we can place them into. Just want to make sure that I'm not missing anything. We did say that earlier, though, about the... Uh, the kind of staffs that we saw with the light. Ooh, what is this? Whoa. Secrets? Someone was having a tea party? I don't think that's supposed to be the bear. I think it is a pig. See, little things like that. That you'd never really see unless you just go around and do a little bit of exploration. Somebody's put that there so people can come across it. I don't know. Maybe a lot of people don't really care about that stuff, but I do. It just puts you more into this world, into this position. Makes you care a little bit more. Alright, let's get rid of this darkness. On there. I want to see what that does to it. Oh, he's slowly starting to dissipate. Look at that. Oh, I love that effect. Let's get the second one in there. Yes! It fears the light. <coughs> oh, shit. Oh, so do I. <gasps> Still really, really jumpy. That's never really left. Okay. Get one there. And one there. There we 
go. We're through. Oh, and the heavens opened. Oh, this is so cool looking. Can't make it across there. Look at this. Rickety ass piece of wood. Oh, God. I see you. This is the end. I'm going to get the answers. You're not going to torment anyone anymore. This place is going to be peaceful, like it always should have been. Without your evil ass being here, tormenting everyone. Let's get to that cabin. See, I'm building up this confidence again. <laughs> it's going to bring me right down back to Earth real quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm going to fall for it twice. Brace, guys. Here we go. Yep. Yep. See? I'm onto your shit now. It's taken me a little while, but I finally got there. So we made our way around. I'd really like to have had at least one or two more of those crystals for being in there. But we were never going to get that lucky. Sound designing this is so good too. Listen to that. I'm such a sucker for like weather sounds as well. Especially lightning, rain, and thunder and stuff like that. What's all this? Oh shit, what is that? Is that my scarecrow friend? Possession and fail. Soon I will be able to finish the reverse ritual, but something is wrong. I think I've made a mistake. I can feel my will becoming weaker. It is like something is making me follow a scenario that was already written. This is what we've been saying all along. All my feelings of superiority and joy, of feeling sharp of mind, it's like they were given to me. To keep my mind in the illusion that it's me controlling my destiny. This is all going way too easily. It's like a cheap performance. But there is no way back. I need to finish what I started. And I can only hope that all will end with the best outcome. It's definitely not going to, and what you've just said right there is exactly what we've been saying all the way through this. The Dark Girl came for me. I needed at least a few more minutes, and I want to finish the ritual. Now I understand she could kill me at any moment, but for reasons unknown to me, she wasn't in a hurry. I wasn't as cunning as I thought. All the chances that I got were given from her. I don't know for what reason. Maybe she had some purpose, maybe she was just toying with me. But now, there is no turning back. I don't want to disappear like those dead bodies. I can't agree that my life will become so pointless. I can't accept this. I try to block those thoughts, but they appeared in my head again and again. My entire part in this story is just to become another victim of these accursed woods. That is a real fear though as well, like the whole line of I can't agree that my life will become so pointless. Basically, when we die, you never want to think about just being forgotten, right? We want to live on in the memory of people that we love, our friends, our family, and stuff like that. So that is a pain to think about going around doing something that you're thinking is making this place better or making a better place, and then just for it all to be for nothing. Somebody was stringing you along, the puppet master, as it said, and you're just going to fall into a nothingness along with everyone else in this spot. Are those the apples? Oh, look at that. I mean, there's a, another opportunity to grab that axe. <laughs> Don't know why it's going to help, but I feel like it will. The hell of a fire, too. All right. Let's finish this. Up to the cabin. One last altar. I think that's a real one, so we should be okay. Stepping in that. I don't know what that is. Is it a toy leg for something? Cash. 
Ooh, there's a a base building here. You guys all heard that, right? There's something walking on the wood behind us. I see you peeking. Don't smash that window and try and grab my hand. Those two arms that we've got. Torso's there. You got a head on the shelf. Yeah, no. See, whenever I see these things like that, when they're slightly open, I think it's one of the Conjuring movies. There's a scene that takes place in like a bedroom where somebody looks at like the door being messed with. And then somebody else comes in and says, look, there's nothing to worry about. And then there's something just crouched on the top. I think it's Bathsheba. I think it might be the first one. It was such a creepy scene, but that always reminds me of it. There's the other arm. Head. Oh, just missing another leg. What was it telling me to, to press then? So this was their home, right? The controlling father. The mother, who was sadly lost. That's where this thing has brought us. That door going to be open? There was a painting there. Or some kind of, yeah, this. The other door. Just trying to take it all in, guys. She's still watching from somewhere. Yep. And this was your room. We still have the teddy bear, right? Yeah, we do. Maybe that'll bring back some peace. What's that? We're talking about the, uh, or the throwback to the story of the wolves. So this is her then. Let's see what we got. Last minutes. Today, my father made my favorite pancakes. He rarely made them after mum's death, but he wanted to make today a special day. He was very kind, asked many questions and listened to me carefully. He hugged me tight and kept saying about my important part in changing this world. Suddenly I saw his tear. It was surprising since he could control his emotions better than anyone I've ever known. It reminded me times that I thought I forgot for ages. Times when I was young. Times when our family was happy and life in the settlement was bright. It was one of the happiest days in my life, but... I knew maybe it was to be my last meal. That's so sad. Before, I could only guess from phrases I heard by accident. But now, I understand everything that is coming. I don't see any point in escape, in begging, or crying. Because I know, a day like this will never happen again. I don't want to die. There's still so many things to be done so much that I haven't had a chance to see and know. But I don't have any power to keep fighting. I can't leave this place. I was prisoner of that place. But still, even the settlers, 
that just do whatever my father say, they became my family. I don't want to abandon them. I don't think they will listen to me, but I can only hope that in the last moments their hearts will open and they will realize what they are doing. This miracle is the last thing that I can hope for. If it doesn't happen, I hope that Yan, oh, of course, Yan, will be able to forgive my father and the settlers. And he'll go back to his city and live a better life. For now, I will clutch to this hope as my mother taught me. I will enjoy this special day and my happy time with my father. That's so incredibly sad. So for everything, I mean, he even owned up to it. He said he wasn't the best dad. But even in this moment of extreme sadness, she's holding on to this as a happy memory because it's one of the only few she ever had. One's that reminder of a happier time. Holy shit. There we go. This is where we finish it here. There's the toy. Teddy bear. So it's everything that's tied to tied to them. You're taking me over to the gate. We can see it moving too. Where did you go? Okay, we got another note. <sighs> what is down there? Fallen. What I've done. That voice that I heard and trusted in. It just manipulated me. It distorted my dreams and hope and used it for his advantage. By causing pain and suffering to Sarah, I released something dark and disgusting. Through Sarah, this thing released an anger that's been imprisoned more than a thousand years. He's revealed all his cards, and now he's laughing at me. He took everything from me, my daughter, my dreams, and now he wants to take all the world. He was imprisoned by kind and pure people when they sacrificed their life. But my selfishness, my strong will to change this world, released him. I made many mistakes during my life. I can't fix them. The only thing that I can do now is relieve this world from another parasite. Is that by jumping into the pit? Is that why it was called falling, maybe? Let me get across that. Oh, in that rain, too. I really thought we were going to slip off the side of that. We're going to have to do the same. Straw Daddy. Okay. <laughs> My daddy promised to give me a bright life. I was reborn and became free as he promised. I wanted to find him and return the favor, but unfortunately he went to a place where no one returns. When I saw him resting on that tree, I felt loneliness. But after that, someone looked through my window. It was my new friend, Strawhead. He changed daddy for me. We have so much fun. We play and remember good old times together. With Strawhead and forest animals, I don't feel lonely anymore. Also, new toys keep coming here to entertain me. But sometimes Strawhead makes me angry with his silence and stupidity. When this happens, I let him rest and hang on the tree. That's what we saw before. Because everyone, same as my daddy, needs some time to rest. Mr. Strawhead, don't be sad. So much fun is still waiting for us. What? Oh, there's no way you want me to jump down there. There's no way. And there's the torso. I'm just gonna place it here. Oh look, another toy. There we go, the head. Gotta put all the runes in. That's the final piece. I can't move. What did we do?
Do we do it? Do we finally break the curse? Is that the spirit moving on? Finally finding peace? Look at those hands. escape to. We weren't trapped in this place. This forest is special. It's like a huge dimension. It's absorbing human thoughts and feelings and keeping them inside. It's recreating them into something meaningful. Only the ones who sincerely search for the answers can find it. All these notes that I found during my journey in this forest were a recreation of these thoughts. Like that, I was able to know all these stories. How good intentions can lead to a disaster and losing everyone. How desire for our inmost target can backfire and make us blind. How a will to dominate among the weak can lead to falling into the abyss. How desire to help a dear person can be impossible to reach. How the most pure can fall down on the weight of cruelty and pain. Sarah showed me that cruelty and despair is not the reason to get rid of kindness. All the experiences that I found here will forever stay with me same as some part of me will always stay in this forest so there we have it guys an end to the cursed forest like i said at the very beginning i really wanted you guys to come along for this adventure because it's been literally years in the making it's not really something that most people will know about but i remember this being on my radar and it's something that i've always wanted to finish which hopefully you guys enjoyed and with there being a lot of dialogue Hopefully I translated it quite well because that was a lot of reading, way more than I think I've ever done before. So if you guys enjoy this and you do want to see more horror on the channel, then please drop a like on the video, subscribe to keep up to date with everything. And as always, I'll see you all in the next one.